Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, and as I do once a month, I like to look at the closed auctions over at Comic Link. And this batch is a little different. I do have some of the usual suspects, as you can tell by this thumbnail, but I also picked out a few to bid on that were a little outside the box just to kind of give you some ideas of the kind of stuff that I like, the kind of stuff I'm buying. Uh, but you know, Comic Link, as I've talked about, is a little weird. You can't just watch an item like you do on eBay or Heritage or anywhere else. You actually have to bid on it in order to have it to your bid list. There's no actual watch function on it. So I didn't bid on all of these because I wanted to buy all of them. I bid on them to watch them and to see where they would sell. I did get a couple of them. One of them I'll show you in this video. But, uh, you know, I, I just found a few others that were maybe a little outside the box that I just thought were interesting enough to talk about. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, speaking of outside the box, this is one that I, I really like. I really like. I was tempted on it. This is Amazing Adult Fantasy number 11. They obviously changed it to Amazing Fantasy when, by the time... Spider-Man's first appearance came out, which was uh, Amazing Fantasy 15. And so this is number 11. This is actually four issues before the first appearance of Spider-Man. That's how old it is. This is 1962. And as Stan Lee likes to do, he will often go back to troll his archives of other books to help with future books. And this is one where he went back and said, hey, you remember that? Amazing Adult Fantasy number 11, where we talked about an octopus that turns into a man. And you can kind of see that right here. Um, Do strange, sinister creatures walk among us in human form? And you can see it's like an octopus monster that turns into a man. And by the way, that man kind of looks like Dr. Octopus, does he not? So this is kind of a prototype Dr. Octopus, obviously the villain from the Amazing Spider-Man run. And that's what Stan Lee does. They, they go back and they kind of troll these prototype type type of stories and create new villains out of it. They did it also with Dr. Doom. There's a kind of a similar book like this where it's a prototype Dr. Doom. And they're not particularly expensive relative to like the first true appearance of Dr. Octopus. So this one was an 8.5 off-white pages and it was one of the highest ones on the census. And it sold for 11.04. So again, it's not maybe something that I would buy before I would get Dr. Octopus's first appearance. But now that I've got that, and I did buy that, uh, and I'll show it to you here soon in a video, uh, Amazing Spider-Man number three, this will be a cool book to pair with it because this is kind of the prototype book that Stan Lee and maybe Steve, Steve Ditko went back. You know, they, they just go back into these archives and find these old stories in the back of their brain to kind of create the main villains that we know and love today. Uh, next up, speaking of Dr. Octopus, this is another book that's on my want list for this year. I didn't buy this one. Uh, I really wanted it, though. This is a 9-4 off white to white pages ASM number 12, the third appearance of Dr. Octopus. Kind of a goofy-looking face to Dr. Octopus there, but it's kind of cool. I don't know. It's not as good as ASM number 11, which is his second appearance. And that's one I do have in a 6.0 with white pages. But this was a 9.4, so that's going to be really, really expensive. And it was. It sold for $4,200. It's very high on the census. Um, but that is one I would like to get. Now that I've got ASM 3, ASM 11, which is the first and second appearance of Dr. Octopus, uh, this one would be a cool one to, to pair with those two books, ASM number 12. Next up, this was a shocker at the upper end of the scale. This is ASM 135 which is the second appearance of The Punisher, also the origin of Tarantula. And pretty great cover, but, you know, about a year, year and a half ago, this was going kind of $3,800 to $4,500. This was a 9.8 with white pages, not perfect centering, kind of a miswrap to, on the left-hand side. That sold for $5,900. And it may not be the highest price ever paid, given that we had the coronavirus peak, but... I would say for recent sales, this was a shocker on the upper end. I was expecting somewhere in that $3,800 to $4,500 range. Uh, I know of one that sold on Heritage in that ballpark, if memory serves. But, man, this this number blew away all expectations, and it is one I would like to have to pair with my ASM 129, which is the first appearance of the Punisher. But 
I can't justify that price for a second appearance. I, you know, maybe a nine six, okay, I, you know, nine six or even a nine four, uh, where the price drops pretty dramatically and it's a secondary key issue. It kind of goes back to what we talked about with reserved investments during my Q and A. The optimal grade for investing. And maybe, you know, a 9.6 makes a little more sense for the second appearance of The Punisher. Long term, does this book hold $5,800 for a second appearance? I find that hard to believe. Uh, but I think if I own a 9.8, Jason, I'm looking at you. Now's not a bad time uh, to, to, to sell it because $5,800 or $5,900, excuse me, that seems like a lot of money for the second appearance. It's also the first dimension, first mention of Harry Osborne as the Green Goblin. So it's got a lot going for the book and it's a beautiful cover, obviously. So I can understand the appeal of having this in a 9.8, but I personally am not going to spend almost six grand on uh, the second appearance. Uh, it's a beautiful book though. Next up, this was another shocker. Oh my God, I could not believe this price. So in all fairness, it is the Canadian price variant for ASM 238, the first appearance of Hobgoblin. Beautiful, iconic cover by John Romita Sr. and Jr. This one was autographed, signed by John Romita Jr. in 2023, fresh case. And, uh, you know, again, it's the Canadian price variant. So even just the standard universal blue label 9.8s, they go for a lot of money, like probably, what, $3,000 plus, I would think. Um, but this one was autographed so I was thinking maybe it might hit thirty-five to at the very top end four thousand dollars. It sold for six thousand one oh one. That is a massive, massive number. And in all fairness, again, it is one of only two nine point eight signature series Canadian price variants. So, but that wow, I mean that is just an incredibly eye popping number. I was shocked by that final number, and. I wouldn't mind having a, just a straight newsstand for this book to pair with my direct edition, but uh, that, that'll set you back, I would think, in that $2,000, $2,300 number, somewhere in that ballpark. But $6,101, what a, a massive number on that. Uh, another book that I've talked about in past comic book market updates to stay away from, and it's proven correct. Uh, maybe two or three market update price guides ago, there was a newsstand ASM 210 that sold on eBay for in the I think it was around 14 to 1600 dollars somewhere in that ballpark. And if you remember, I said don't buy it. This book is going to drop like a rock. And this is the newsstand ASM 210 first appearance of Madam Web. We all know how bad the movie is and how bad it bombed. Uh, this one was the newsstand 98 and it sold for 902. So whoever paid that crazy price. Uh, they're really regretting it right now because it's going to continue to drop in my estimation. Now, 902 is getting a little closer for a newsstand as to where I'd pay. I'd probably be willing to go to like 450 to 500 for the direct uh, newsstand. You know, I, I don't know where the number is for me. It's a 1980 book, so it's not necessarily that hard to find in a newsstand. Uh, maybe 700, somewhere in that ballpark. So it's it's fairly close. I think 902 is closer to reality and closer to a number where if you absolutely had to have this book, now's a lot better time to get it. And that price point is a lot better than $1,500, $2,000 like you see on eBay. Um, I still think that it's it's a book that's going to continue to drop, though. And I'd probably stay away from it for a while. Uh, Marvel Team Up number 141. This was a new stand. It sold at 609 609 Really good deal there. That ties with ASM 252 for the first black costume Spider-Man. Uh, ASM 252 in a newsstand is one I do have, and this is one I'd like to pair with it. So I'd have both of the books that are tied for the first appearance of the Black Suit Spidey. And it's a great, I love this cover, love it. Daredevil, Black Widow, and then obviously Spider-Man with a bunch of gun barrels pointed at him. Uh, this is like if my wife found a Hakes unbox, you know, a, a Hakes UPS box at our front door. She wouldn't just bother getting one gun. She would get six guns. So she she would, uh, she, and that would be me, you know, right in the middle there, all those guns pointed at me. That would be me. That would be me. Um, so, you know, again, 609, that's one of the lower prices I've seen recently for the newsstand. Team up 141. I, I had been kind of used to 725, 750, 775 in that ballpark. But 609 is a great deal. Great deal. I think that was a really good pickup. 
and I'd be willing to pay that price right now. I think, I, you know, to me, it's, this book has is gotten comfortable enough price wise that I'd pay. It. And you got to remember, for a newsstand ASM two fifty two, the book that this is tied with for the first black suit Spidey, you're you're spending significantly more money, significantly more money. So if you want to have a newsstand first black suit, this is a much more affordable option. It's not as good a cover, obviously, because the ASM 252 is an homage or homage to Amazing Fantasy 15. So that's a, that's a really, really good cover. But uh, this is a nice pairing with it. And 609 is a great price. Ultimate Fallout 4, two of those sold. 951 and 960 were the two sales prices for the first print, first appearance of Miles. Yeah, that continues to go down as well, and I keep putting off buying it. it. You know, it's a book I want. I want to have. I don't particularly care about the investment value of it, the investment pr pr prospects for it. There are a lot on the census, admittedly, and it's a modern book. It's a, it's a high-risk book to buy, but I love Miles Morales. That, that's what it boils down to. I, I love Miles. I love the Spider-Verse movies, and I think he's got a bright future in live-action content. So... It's getting really tempting at this point. 950, 960. Last month, one sold on Comic Link, 1100. So we're we're sub 1,000 dollars now consistently. Does it get even lower? Probably. Uh, I think my number now. I keep adjusting it lower, by the way. Um, I, I think my number is getting really close. So I'm probably going to pull the trigger on it now. And I think if you're if you're a big Miles fan and you want the first print. Again, they're, they're every month they come up on Comic Link and everywhere else. They're everywhere. I mean, there's two. I don't know what the exact census count is, but there's probably two thousand of them easily. So, you know, I, I think you're getting pretty close to where I would feel comfortable knowing that even if it dropped further, eh, if it drops a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, three hundred, I can't see this book getting to five hundred bucks again. Maybe it does. A, a lot of people on Instagram think it will. I don't. I, I don't think it's going to get to five hundred dollars. But uh, it's getting really tempting at, at the current price. Uh, just some other kind of wonky books that are a little outside of my norm. Uh, a a a Avengers 47 in a 9.6. This is the first appearance of Dane Whitman, who becomes the new Black Knight. Uh, not, I don't really care about the Black Knight. I just love this Magneto cover. Awesome Magneto cover. Look at that. I think this is one that Swaggle House picked up recently and got graded, and his came back like a 9.0 or 9.2. Uh, this was a 9.6 off-white pages. Uh, and I, I mean, to me, this is about the cover more than anything. I don't, you know, again, I'm sure Dane Whitman, the black Knight is, he's got his following and all that. that. That's not why I would personally get the book. I just like this early 1967 Magneto cover. It is really nice. I just love it. Magneto walks the earth and it's just kind of an alternate, you know, kind of a off the wall idea. And it's an expensive one, 1357 for that nine, six, uh, Avengers 196 is another book that, if you are a fan of this book, the first appearance of Taskmaster, not a bad time to get it. This was a direct edition, and that sold for $7.55. It's really dropped. Uh, the newsstand is probably in the ballpark of $900 to $1,000. I just love that cover. It's, it's a great cover. They didn't really do Taskmaster any favors in the MCU in the Black Widow, uh, the Black Widow prequel movie. Um, Taskmaster was kind of a boring villain in, in that movie. I, I'm hoping that they can do more with Taskmaster, but it's just a great, great cover. I love it. And uh, again, $7.55 for the direct. It's not, that's not a terrible deal. That's a price I'd probably pay fairly low on the census for the 9.8s. Uh, again, some more off the wall ideas. Tales of Suspense 66. I really like this one a lot. This is a great book and fairly undervalued in certain grades. This was a 9-2 off-white to white pages. It's the origin and first Silver Age appearance of the original Red Skull. I mean, that's, that's, a, big, that's a big first appearance for a, a Silver Age and origin Red Skull. It's got Captain America tied up with Red Skull pointing his blaster at him. It's got Iron Man on there, Tales of Suspense. I mean, it's just a great, great cover. This was a 9-2 off-white to white, and it sold for four seventy five. dollars To me, that's a great buy. I mean, I, I would buy that in a heartbeat. Here's another one that obviously was a lot more expensive, but this was Tales of Suspense number 90 from 1967, and just an awesome, awesome Red Skull cover with uh, with Captain America there. I mean, you can't beat that cover. This was a 9-8 white pages, and it sold for twenty six sixty nine. So, again... This is a, a, a non-key issue, probably not worth getting in a 9.8 to me, uh, maybe a 9.4 or a 9.6, and it gets a lot more affordable. It, it, the price drops dramatically. It's many multiples 
lower. Uh, but I just like both of those covers a lot. Uh, another one that's kind of off the wall, House of Secrets number 127 in a 9.6. I just like the cover. It shows Death playing billiards, getting ready to smash some unlucky dude with the 13 ball. <laughs> unlucky number 13 and the 8 ball there. You know, it's just everything about that cover is great. And it's also, you know, just a... Uh, Louis uh, Dom, Dom, Domeninga, Domeninga's cover. He's kind of well known for a lot of these covers, and I, I don't know. I don't know or collect him or anything like that. But I, I see enough of his covers to recognize, and it's just a beautiful cover. So this was from '75, and that one sold for nine sixty-two. Again, a little off the wall, but uh, a, a really beautiful cover. Here's one that I do think is a good buy. This is Marvel feature number eleven. It's got a lot going on for it. Uh, this is the first Thing solo book. So the first time that the Thing from the Fantastic Four has a solo comic. It's a Hulk versus Thing, and it's also a Fantastic Four origin retold. So that's got a lot going on for this book, and it's a great cover showing the Thing fighting the Hulk. 9.8 white pages, and it sold for eight fifty. I know that's a lot of money, but it is a 9.8, and there's not a ton of these in a 9.8. I just thought it was a, a, a beautiful book with a lot of key factors associated with it that it piqued my interest. I ended up spending my money elsewhere, but I was very tempted to, to bid on this one. Uh, I, I just think it's one to keep on your radar if you see one pop up in that price point. Um, there, I think there is one of these on eBay that's listed for 800 and uh, it's, it's from David from Co Comic Book Investments, and it might have sold by now. I don't know, but it's listed at 800 by Comic Book Investments, who I've had on the channel. He's a comic book dealer. If you go direct to his website, though, you don't have to pay sales tax on it. So, And it's a 9-8 white pages, and it's more freshly graded than this one, but better colors, too. So if you're interested in this book, he does have one on his website uh, for sale, same grade and everything, for 800 and this one went for 850 uh, Next up, we've got Star Wars number one. We're going to start with the Star Wars books. This was a 9-8, sold for 30 18 Pretty clean cover, although it did have some bleed through, which I talk about all the time. That usually brings the price down a couple hundred bucks. Uh, last month, one without any bleed through went like thirty two hundred, thirty two fifty. This one went thirty eighteen. Um, probably about right, just given that it doesn't. You know, it's not perfect. It had good centering, good colors, but it did have that nasty bleed through on the Star Wars logo, which uh, keeps the price down. You know, it'll keep. You know, it'll get. If you're bidding on one that does have the bleed through, you're going to usually get it for a couple hundred, 200, anywhere from two to four hundred dollars less than, than market. So it seems like it's, you know, Star Wars one in a nine eight is hovering and held its value. It's kind of got a good floor right now. It's been consistently for three or four months now hovering between three thousand and thirty four hundred. So it, it hasn't, it hasn't budged. It hasn't budged at all. So I think that's a safe number to, to bid on. Uh, here's one I did buy. This is Star Wars annual. Number three in a nine eight white pages, and uh, it's one I have been looking forever for forever. And uh, there was one on eBay that popped up that I missed. It sold immediately. It's one of I think less than ninety nine eights on the census, and it peaked around nine hundred or a thousand bucks somewhere in that ballpark. It's just a great cover of Darth Vader. I think this is really supposed to depict the the battle at Bespin between him and Luke where he's saying, join me, uh, and we can rule the galaxy as father and son. And he's reaching his hand out to, to Luke. And, I mean, that is an awesome cover. It's a dark cover. It's got a dark black border on it on all sides. And so it's hard to get a 9.8 for this book. This was freshly graded, 9.8. And the Go Collect Fair Market value is like 450. I bid 475 to win it. I, I just didn't care. I was like, I, I, think, I think I actually bid 500. I was like, I'm not losing this book. I've been looking for this book for like five years, and I finally got it. So I'm very happy to get that one. So uh, that one is on the way along with another big book. Uh, here is a new stand for Star Wars 42, the first appearance of Boba Fett. A little bit of a miswrap on that one. That one sold at 1400 and that's another book that seems to have found its floor. Um, $1,200 to $1,400. Most of them are going $1,400 or more. There was one that just sold on eBay at $2,000. So... $1,400 seems to be the going rate for the floor for Star Wars 42 in a newsstand. First appearance of Boba Fett and Yoda in standard size comics. Uh, Star Wars 68, this was the Canadian edition. If you'll remember, in a 9.8 with white pages, one sold last fall 
for 20, I think it was around 2300. This one went 1459. So this book is on the way down and continues to go down. Uh, this is the first appearance of the planet Mandalore and Mandalorians in comics. Great Fennec Shand cover. No, not Fennec Shand. Uh, Fen Shiza cover. <laughs> I'm getting my I'm getting my uh, bounty hunters mixed up. Anyway, 1459 on that one. It says the origin of Boba Fett. It's not. It's really the or the origin or the the first appearance of the planet Mandalore and Mandalorians. But great book, and now's a good time to get it. It's really gone down a lot for the Canadian price variant. You get it at 1459. Great deal. Uh, the special edition Clone Wars number one. Another nine eight sold. Last month, one sold at $3,000. This month, it sold at $2,500. $2,500. This was freshly graded, too. Uh, this book, I think, is going to continue to go down. I think if it hits, a, you know, it might get down to 2000 bucks. I really do. I mean, last month, 3000 This month, 2500 I bet the next time one comes up on Comic Link, it, it doesn't even hit $2,000. Clone Wars number one is on the way down. It's dropping like an absolute rock. Some X-Men books, uh, we've got, this is another one that, that maybe you haven't thought about or, or I've talked about, X-Men 66. This is the last new story with the original X-Men, and it's also a Hulk appearance. The Hulk fights the X-Men. Pretty great cover on that one. This was a 9.6 white pages. That one sold at 9.31. Uh, Go Collect had the FMV at 1100, so I thought a 9.6 white pages for 9.31 was a really good deal. Uh, here's another one that is on my want list, not in a 9.8. I've got a 9.6 and a 9.8 that sold. And again, this goes back to what we talked about, optimal investment grade. And the reason this book is worth so much is it's a great cover, number one. It's got the Sentinels fighting the X-Men. You've got Nightcrawler, Colossus, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Storm fighting the Sentinels. But it's also, I think, if I remember right, it's the first appearance of Wolverine without his mask. And I think this is where they introduce his healing power. Something like that. It's something something related to the backstory related to his adamantium claws. And is I think it's his first appearance without the mask on uh, as Wolverine. So for me, a big Wolverine fan, this is a book I want to get in a 9.6. Uh, the 9.6, this one sold at 1000 bucks. They also had a 9.8 with white pages. That one sold at 4,789. So to go from a 9.6, we're talking maybe one or two spine ticks. It's a big, big, a big jump. 1,000 to 47.89. So I'm going to aim for a 9.6 or a 9.4. <laughs> I'm not going to be getting a 9.8, but a 9.8 is certainly a, a very desirable book. It's just such a, sec it's got such a secondary aspect to it that I can't justify a 9.8 for this book. And so this is a, a good book to target for optimal ingress, you know, an optimal investment grade is the 9.6, in my opinion, before it really jumps up to the 9.8. Finally, Uncanny X-Men 266 in a newsstand. First full appearance of Gambit. Great cover. Uh, this one is definitely holding its own. 1432 on this one. They sell usually around 1600 on eBay, so I thought that was a pretty decent deal for the newsstand. X-Men 266 first full appearance of Gambit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at recent sales on Comic Link. I hope you got some good ideas for purchases in your future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be back soon.